In this video, I'll discuss some of the basics of understanding phylogenetic trees. So phylogenetic trees are essential tools in evolutionary biology for presenting and understanding the relationships among organisms. They are also often used in ecology and other biological disciplines for showing the relationships between organisms, taxa, and other biological entities. So typically phylogenetic trees represent the relationship among species and throughout this video as a case study I will use various chickadees such as black cap chickadee, mountain chickadee, Mexican chickadee, and so forth shown here. So here's a phylogenetic tree showing the relationship of several, several black cap chickadees from throughout North America. And this tree represents which species are most closely related to each other. For example, genetic evidence indicates that the black cap chickadee and the mountain chickadee are closely related to each other, and the boreal chickadee and the chestnut back chickadee are closely related to each other. Often we put species on the tips of our phylogenetic trees, as in this case, but really any taxa or any taxonomic group can be put. We can put individuals, such as individual patients, or we can put individual cells. We could put subspecies, species, populations, genera, uh, even families or other taxonomic groups. Key is we're talking about the evolutionary relationships. We're not interested in how similar organisms look or how similarly they behave. We're interested in understanding the evolutionary relationships amongst, among species. Now sometimes how similar two species look can help inform this, but it's not always uh, that it's not always the best way to, to build phylogenies. Often genetic evidence is the strongest way. So for example, three species that uh, we can consider are the black cap chickadee, the mountain chickadee, and the Carolina chickadee. Now, at least to my eye, the black cap chickadee and the Carolina chickadee look pretty similar to each other, and they both occur in the eastern United States. Their ranges uh, line abut each other in uh, Appalachia, just south of Pennsylvania. And also, morphologically, the mountain chickadee, which occurs more in the upper Midwest, Montana, Rocky Mountains, the mountain chickadee has this prominent eye stripe, this white eye stripe, that is lacking in these other species. So these two species occur right next to each other. They actually can interbreed. And morphologically, physically, they look slightly different. So based on my non-expert opinion, I might draw a phylogenetic tree where the black cap chickadee and the Carolina chickadee are, are linked there by, um, there's a node here and there's branches going off each other. And the mountain chickadee is more distantly related. So you have to go down to this branch here for the mountain chickadee. However, this is wrong, and genetic evidence and other evidence at a more fine scale than just what I can come up with looking at pictures indicates that the black cap chickadee and the mountain chickadee are more closely related to each other, and the Carolina chickadee is more distantly related. So this tree, throughout most of this video, I'll be using this tree here. I don't have the... Carolina chickadee on it just for simplicity. If I wanted to put the Carolina chickadee in, it would go somewhere here. Where it is relative to other species, Carolina chickadee is placed on the tree fairly close to the black cap chickadee, but the mountain chickadee and the black cap chickadee are closest to each other. And actually, at least the most recent evidence, the relatively recent evidence that I've looked at, is we're very confident that the black cap chickadee and the mountain chickadee are each other's closest relatives here. The exact placement of the Carolina chickadee is a little more uncertain. But for our purposes, at least, it'd be easiest just to put it right here as uh, closely related to the black cap chickadee, but not as closely related as the mountain chickadee. So we'll go forward. Uh, we're going to drop the Carolina chickadee. We'll use this phylogenetic tree without it for now. So I'm going to go over some terminology, basic terminology related to phylogenetic tree. The root of the phylogenetic tree is at the base of the tree. Not all phylogenetic trees have a root. Typically those that appear in most basic biological books and also uh, ecology 
we uh, show a tree here. And that indicates the common ancestor, the inferred common ancestor of all species on the tree. The tree is composed of branches. You can have a branch that represents a single taxon. So this is a branch here. This is a branch here. We could also say all of this is a branch here. Branches split at nodes, so there's a node here, there's a node here, there's a node here at the root, also a node there, and so forth. So a taxonomic group, this is a somewhat confusing term in biology, a taxonomic group is some sort of named group of populations or species, or it can even be a, a, could potentially be um, even finer grained than populations, but typically refers to population, species, or some higher group. So species is a ta taxonomic group of all populations within the species. Genus is a taxonomic group of all of the species. If there are multiple species within the genus, family is a group of um, all the genera and so forth. These terms can be somewhat confusing, so I have a little uh, short write-up that you can see online called Taxa, Taxon, and Clades. It's a brief primer. You can follow the link there. So branches can have one or more taxa. So here is a branch, which at its tip had a single taxa up here, the black cap chickadee. You can also have a branch with multiple taxa. So this is a branch that has one, two, three, four tips associated with it. So all of this is a branch composed of multiple sub branches. Sister species are each other's closest relatives. So here we have two sister species here. Here are also two sister species here. They are each other's closest relatives. This species here is not a sister with there because there is this species here in between. Uh, these two are not sister species because there is this species here in between. Sister species evolved most recently from the same common ancestor. So common ancestors are indicated by nodes. So there's a node here. These two sister species share this node there, down here. These two sister species share this node here, this common ancestor. So it's very important to understand these represent common ancestors. We don't necessarily know, or typically we can't know or don't know what they look like, but they are inferred. The inferred species that existed in the past that was the common ancestor of these two species that we can see currently. So the node here is a common ancestor. There's here is a common ancestor. If we went further back here, this node would be the common ancestor of all of these species. This node here would be the common ancestors of all of the species in this clade. And this node here is the common ancestors of all of the species in the clade. A clade is all of the taxa that descended from a single common ancestor. So here we use the root of the tree, the common ancestor, this is a clade with six taxa. This node here, or we could use this node here also, more commonly would probably use this node here. This is a clade with four taxa. Here is a clade with three taxa, all descended from this common ancestor. Sometimes we may want to group species differently, so for perhaps we had a reason to include these four species here in a group. They're all from North America, so perhaps we'd want to group together North American species. However, evolutionarily, phylogenetically, they are not clade because we'd be ignoring these other species that share this common ancestor. So this common ancestor has all of these tips associated with it. All of these tips are um, descended from that common ancestor. If we wanted to find a clade, we have to include all of them. So if we wanted to do this, we'd have to define two separate clades, each with a separate common ancestor. Just like you can have sister species, you can have, you can have sister clades. So this clade here is the sister clade of this clade here. So one clade here, two clade here, we can refer to them as sister clades. Many trees have outgroups on them. In this case, I've added an outgroup. Outgroups are more distantly related species that are used for comparison. So here I've added a species that is quite different from 
the uh, chickadees. It's a Eurasian wren. It's a small species, lives in the woods, but it has a very different beak, very different um, uh, legs, very different wings. Uh, overall, has a different lifestyle, and um, in terms of its genetics, is quite distantly related. So we can use it as a comparison. So that is the out group. The in group is the clade of interest, all the species descended from a common ancestor that we are interested in studying. So here's a summary of all of these major features. A key thing about trees is that the order of the taxa isn't a key feature of the tree, or rather the order of the taxa on the tree isn't a key feature. So here, we'll take a look at these two species here, black cap chickadee and the mountain chickadee. And here I happen to have black cap chickadee uh, the, at the very top of the tree and mountain chickadee as the second here. I can actually rotate these and it doesn't impact the tree at all. It doesn't impact the interpretation of the tree. So I can flop these around. I have a node here and I can rotate around the node. I can put the mountain chickadee on top, black cap chickadee on the bottom, rotate it around that node. doesn't change um, at all what's going on. Both of these species are still connected at this node, at this common ancestor. I haven't changed the meaning of the tree, the information contained in the tree at all. Similarly, I can look at the boreal chickadee and the chestnut back chickadee. I can rotate around this node. I can put the boreal at the bottom and the chestnut there, so I can go back and forth, back and forth. I haven't changed the meaning of the tree at all. These, these, species, these species are still connected via this node here, this common ancestor haven't changed the meaning at all. Rotation can occur around any node. Um, so here I have flopped the entire tree. I put black capped and mountain chickadee at the bottom and boreal are up here. So I've rotated the around this node here. Haven't actually changed the meaning of the tree at all. All of the relationships, all of the branching patterns, all, um, are identical. So take a look at these trees here, look at them carefully, you may want to pause the video. The overall pattern of branching is identical even though the order that the branches, that the tips appear from top to bottom are the same. So look at this carefully. In order to understand what I'm saying you need to see how these are actually identical. If you look carefully here we have blue and purple located next to each other here, and then there is a third branch there. That same pattern is repeated over here. Blue and purple over here, third branch over there, and then this other branch here corresponds to that one there. So purple, purple, blue, blue, this short branch here, this short branch there, longer branch there, longer branch there, this clade here is there. Definitely pause the video and look at that in order to understand it. Trees are very tricky to understand, so here are two papers that you can look up via Google Scholar or the internet. You should be able to obtain both of them for free, and they provide more information on how to interpret phylogenetic trees.